Hi there. So it might look a little different. I did end up, I hit pause and then I just hit stop because we ended up needing a potty break. And then it turned into a lunch break. And uh, so now we're back up here. Uh, somebody's had playtime and lunch time and another potty time, lots of potty times. And now she's in her little pen and she's chewing on her Kong. Gave me time to um, think about my approach for um, Miss Louise's dedication to her friend Rita. And I'm hoping this fits in here nicely, that it's not too tight. But I may have to, I may have to rethink. Yeah, that's a little too tight for my liking. So I'm, this is a bit of chipboard. I'm going to go a little thinner. Um, that will be a little thinner. Especially once I glue on, that's much better. This will loosen up a bit. It's paper, it gives a little bit. Um, I guess I could have put a gusset in it, but I didn't. Um, and I'm okay with that. Uh, the next owner, if they decide they want to gusset this, be very easy. It would be easy to do. You could just take a knife run it along the bottom, run it along there, and then slide in uh, some little folded gusset panels. It'd be very easy to do, but I'm not going to. I, I like this. So um, I came up with the decision that I'm going to make this look like a faux um, carte de visite slash cabinet card kind of thing. And uh, I went through all of my whale tail tabs that I have to find one that sort of matches this. And these kind of get, they match, but they kind of get lost. That one's not so bad, the dark. This is my only one left that's sort of a lavender plum color, and I do like it. It's, there's enough of a contrast. There's enough of the... These are either lilacs or hydrangea. I think they're hydrangea. Lilacs usually come out almost to like a softened point. So I don't think they're lilacs. Um, of course, they could be something else. I'm not a... I don't know flowers. So I'm going to go with this. I think, uh, I think that looks very nice. And it goes with sort of my green and purpley, lavendery plum... Anyhow, so uh, so what we're going to do now for the second half is we're going to turn this into sort of a, we're going to imagine it was a carte de visite that um, Louise gave with the book to her friend Rita. And uh, so then what, uh, what I usually do when I'm making a faux one, as opposed to using a real one, is I'll just find a nice black and white picture out of these books that I, I always keep my eye out for, uh, usually historical books, histories of towns or communities or an era that are just full of old photos. And uh, they just make a terrific, a terrific um, source of instant ancestors for your junk journals. Now that says $3.00. I have no doubt I would wager big bucks um, that I got this on 75% off day, or at the very least 50% off day. But I find my little, my little, um, that's from St. Vincent de Paul here in my town. I find that more often than not, if their books are going to go on sale, they usually are 75% off for some reason. So I want this lady. I think she looks, she's beautiful sitting on, sitting on a hammock on a porch. She's got a book in her hand. I actually think it's a book of music. So um, let's just, let's steal this page, shall we? I'm just going to cut it out. There's no need to cut the um, signature threads. It would be highly unlikely I would ever use any of these, any of these folios intact. 
so I'm not going to worry about it. So now here, here's my challenge. I need this, uh, the, the card, the carte de, de visite. I'm just going to call it that for now, whether it's, it's obviously not going to be the exact size that one was, but I do think that they did vary a little bit in size. Um, it needs to be able to fit in there. I'm going to grab an index card to sort of use a bit to base my size on and see if I like that. Hold on. Let's just use that for now. This will do. Let's see if it fits in this way. So that just fits. So I actually don't want it that wide. Okay, that'll work. All right. You might have heard someone back there from the cheap seats. All right. Um, glue. I'm going to use glue stick and I'm going to use it very gently because this paper is 140 years old and although it's quite tough I still know that it would be my luck that I would end up tearing it and ruining this whole project and it really is one of the nice aspects of this book is being able to save the the little salutation that's in it now ah, I'm losing things here I just want to wipe this off I hate I get them grungy all the time there we go let me see what she's up to I heard a little bit of Gosh, it's nice to be able to turn around and check on her. But it's also good to teach her that she can play quietly on her own. And that's quite all right for a little dog to do. Probably should have done that from the fold up. This could have been disastrous, trying to smooth it out from the open side down. Thank goodness it all worked out all right. All right, so I was hoping to save this rough side so that it looks like it was actually the page out of the book. But since we're going to make this into a carte de visite, um, it's allowed to have the... Um, smooth edges. My brain's going. I'm, I'm starting to think, okay, now we've got to do this. Sometimes when your focal point has varying areas, perimeters that your eye is drawn to, you sort of have to decide what feels like the natural center, because it's not always what you think is the precise center. It's more the center that your eyes are drawn to. And although you'd think that your eyes would be drawn to, you know, her pretty face. Um, for me, I find that I'm more drawn to just this whole area in general. From holding the book, shoulders, head, almost like this ivory part. So that's going to be my aim to have mostly centered so what I will do in this case is trim off my two sides first. Then I will go from there and come in and make my final decision on what that's going to be. I think she's, I think she's thinking about having an after lunch full tummy nap. Everyone likes a full tummy nap. 
All right, so, and this is still probably going to come in from either side as well because I'm going to want to do fresh edges there. Now, normally a carte de visite wouldn't be um, black and white gray tones the way this is. I find that most of them are sepia toned, but we're still going to do our version and make it pretty. So here's where I start deciding where this part is going to be. Oh my, I didn't even notice, but if you look carefully, hopefully it's not blurry, there's a great big dog sitting here at her feet looking up at her. Isn't that something? Great big, can't quite make, it looks too big to be German Shepherd or a, um, what's the other, is it a Malinois? That looks similar to a German Shepherd, but it's not. Hmm. Very pretty. All right, so I think I want this part here. It's going to get trimmed a bit. I want a bit more space at her head. I like this glowy look, and I'd rather be looking at that rather than the bottom of her dress. So I think, and this part, I'm going to need room to trim off that. So we're just going to go with this for now. There we go. So let's see what I mean. I take bit by bit by bit. It's just like with a haircut. I can't glue it back on. So I'd rather take little bits at a time. For our little faux, you know, maybe she included a Maybe she included a card for her friend. I don't want that little edge. So I think I'm going to... I just want to measure this so it's same size. Now, I don't think... My cutting board will let me cut through this. So we're going to use this instead. I'm going to turn it around. I can't see my little I can't see my little spot up there. So I use the grids on on the cutting board to make sure I am at 90 degrees. I think I think someone got pooped out. So again, I'm just there. It doesn't have to be too approximate. I'm going to cut fresh edges yet again once I get this all glued together. She's out. You might have noticed on this old board that I love, um, there's two white lines, north, south, east, west. I did that with a white marker. I love it. It, um, it just makes it easier for me to be able to see top to bottom of one line. 
all these all look like a blur to me at least and say I wanted to cut along that line here you don't necessarily know if that's the same one coming out down here even though they try to make the every inch grid a little bit thicker than the, the quarter inch it was just too hard for me to see so I simply used my ruler I used a white pen and I just did one line north south one line east west or west east and um, it um, made all the difference okay so that's good so I want I want you there so More or less, like I said, I will be trimming again for a fresh cut when I get the whole thing all glued together. There we go. Now, even just like with a cutting uh, board, you can get displaced paper on the other side when you've used um, a blade and a, a ruler. So I find I still like to push down that little displaced side. There we go. So we're going to put Miss um, Bessie Maud, I guess this is you Bessie Maud, you, including a picture of yourself in with the book that you're gifting to your friend. So. Um, I think I'm going to use a very thin layer of Mod Podge. Which is a risk, because sometimes Mod Podge uh, can make things buckle. But I'm, I'm determined. I might use glue on this one. I'm guessing myself. Don't overthink it, Catherine. Um, I'm just going to put a little bit down and spread it around very thin and work very quickly. I use Mod Podge when I make my two nano bookmarks and it usually glues very nicely with minimal buckling. I'm not sure what to expect from the old paper side. Well, oh, come on, let go. There. Okay, that feels good. I think to avoid too much moisture at one time, I'm going to pause. I'm going to let this dry under a brick. And then, um, and then I will come back and do the other side. Brick in place. Hang on to your hats. This will be done in the blink of an instant. All right. I think someone finally pooped out over there. I'll see if at the end, if I can, if she's awake, um, if I can take the camera off the tripod and we can go over for a little visit. All right, so now we want to glue this on this side, like this. I'm going to take a chance and do Mod Podge. I know it's water-based, but this is now double. So I'm hoping... No, no, no. No, no Mod Podge. No. 
glue. I'm going to do glue. Okay. <laughs> Here's the plan of attack. We're flying by the seat of our pants here. I'm going to do glue. I'm going to do a little bit of this around the edges. Um, art glitter glue. It looks old. I refill it. It's kind of nasty looking. Now, because I'm going to have to move quickly, I want to make sure that the art glitter glue is already um, ready to go. I don't want to. I don't want to get um, the glue stick laid down and then find out this thing is plugged. All right, so that's good. I'm going to put it upside down so it's ready to go. And we're going to do glue stick. And again, I'm going to be very gentle. And hopefully little Miss Kirby is going to let me finish this. <laughs> Unless she decides to start to let me know, hey, I'm here and I want attention. All right, here's where I'm going to move quick. So I want to sort of casually around the edge because I don't know where I'm going to cut the new fresh edge and quick 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 because um, our glitter glue likes to leave those stripes there we go that's her upside oh I don't want glue on that that's her upside so this is going to be I hope I'm in center I've got to move fast Um, and then I'm going to put this oh, oh, lump on there. Wowie. Lump of glue on that edge. Here, let's feel if this one, that one's got a lump of glue too. Okay. I just noticed a little, it's okay because we want this to look old. I mean, yes, the book is pre-1882, but perhaps it's one of, you know, maybe Louise had it on her bookshelf forever. She was going to move away, which is why I can't find her, her death anywhere in our area. And she wanted to give her book that she loved to her friend as a remembrance. I've got a teacup. A, a, Long China teacup. Um, my my Nana. So actually, the Nana. Hold on, hold on. You know I love. You know I love a good story. So uh, this lady here, who was my Nana, her best friend was moving away. So she gave her a Royal Albert teacup with Forget Me Not flowers on it. And she loved that teacup that her friend gave her. And uh, back then, when a friend moved away, you usually depended on if people were good letter writers and they kept up their letters. Um, otherwise, you cherished whatever they left with you when they went. So my Nana had this teacup that she loved with um, the forget-me-nots on it. Well, then my Nana was moving out to California to live with my Aunt Ramona, my mother's older sister. And uh, she most likely was not going to be returning to Toronto to live. So my Nana gave this, um, there we go, she gave the teacup with the forget-me-nots on it to my mother. To remember, just as a little going away to her daughter, because she knew she was going to be moving away. And as it turned out, um, my mom only saw her mother two more times in her lifetime after that. Um, and then my mom, when I moved out, when I got married and moved out, my mother gave me the teacup with the forget-me-nots. Now, fortunately, I stayed with my mom. Um, 
well, you, as you know, till she died. Um, but forget-me-nots became even more important to me because, of course, my mother de developed dementia. And forget-me-nots is the symbol uh, for dementia. All right, there we go. I was able to get some stuff done and tell you a little story about my forget-me-not tea teacup. All right, so I'm going to pause and let this finish drying. It's still damp, and I'm concerned that if I drag a blade across it, that it's going to um, just rip or, or shred. Um, and I may actually use my cutting board with the wheel and just go over it and over it and over it. Um, rather than try and drag a blade through this soft, mushy old paper that now has also had some water-based glue. So I'm going to pause. We'll get this done, don't worry. Okay, so that that little break. Let us go out for a little break, another little play time. And, um, and now she's got a Kong stuffed full of uh, the rest of her lunch that she didn't eat, and now she's enjoying it. Um, so again, I'm using this cutter. It's got a wheel on it. And uh, I'm hoping, here's my theory, that even if I have to do five, six, seven, eight swipes, that that will cut that paper better. Yes, that's what I was hoping for. Oh, and while I was off camera, I also decided where I wanted the cutting lines. So in case uh, you're thinking, why? where is she cutting? Why? 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 <laughs> I already determined that during that tiny little break. Now, the height. See how we're getting there? We're getting there. Got to make sure there's no glue on it. Boy, that could have been a disaster earlier. Um, again, just pushing down the displaced edge again. All right, so I want fresh edges here and here. And that doesn't matter so much because there's plenty of room for it. Can just decide freehand where we want it and then again let me move this down I'm sorry back and forth normally I wouldn't do that it's hard on the blade but this is more important to me and that blades it could do with being replaced soon anyhow so I'm not overly worried okay tiny tiny little bit off this edge just so that it's fresh and uniform. There we go. Beautiful. All right. There we go. Now, I know for a fact that um, I know for a fact that my corner punch is not going to chomp through this thickness. I mostly just want to give myself a tiny guide and I'm just going to freehand it with scissors. Probably didn't even have to do that, but I really want this to be nice. So it doesn't need to be precise because we're going to sand it. All right, so 
this is one of the biggest parts of when you're making a faux carte de visite or a faux cabinet card, your sanding block is your best friend. It's going to give you that finished edge that makes the whole thing look like the real deal or as close. I mean, obviously it doesn't, I'm not trying to completely make this look like it could pass, but I just want it, I want it to look nice. I want it to be in the spirit of a friend giving another friend a going away memento. Mind you, it was for Christmas, but maybe she mailed it to her. You know, we don't know. Maybe she'd been away and thought, oh, I'm going to send this book to my friend. So I'm going to pause and I'm going to finish this sanding because it takes a few minutes. I'll sand both sides and then I'll show you what I do next. Okay, so the edges are just beautifully smooth now. The corners are rounded. So even if your scissors don't do a nice job, um, they're kind of jaggedy. Sorry, I got glue and gunk. Uh, that's where your sanding block will make it look nice. So now here's where we make the magic happen. You need, or here's what I use. Um, this is my latest favorite um, distress ink to use, but I'm not opposed to pulling this one out. It's a little darker, so I'm going to keep it handy in case I want to go even darker. Now, because this is black and white, and I want it to have a slight hint of, give it the illusion of a sepia tone, I'm going to give it a little bit of antique linen distress ink. I find that for this kind of thing over a photo, use the ink. Do not use the oxide. The oxide leaves a bit of a matte coating on top and it will actually hinder, it hinders the appearance of the photo um, and covers up. It lightens it sort of in a way, the coating. So what I do is, um, Makeup brush, Distress Ink. I label mine, my fresh ones and my old ones, because I still like using the old ones because you don't get that big blop of ink the way you can with a brand new one. And I will still use the old ones. I'll rub it over with old, or in this case, I just want the slightest hint. So I don't mind that uh, this is an old pad. I find for some things, it's exactly what I want. So I'm just giving those areas that are gray a slight yellowish tinge. Oh, I hear someone. Okay, should we go out? I'll be back. Okay. Um, such is life with a puppy. <laughs> we will get a video done but it might be in <laughs> eight segments. <laughs> so I don't know if it's evident. You can now see the difference between this white paper and the color of this photo now. What was sort of a grayish light color now has a yellowish hue. Obviously we can't change the color of the ink. It is... Uh, It's a grayish black. That's fine. We can still work with it. We'll make this look good. All right. So I'm going to start with this one because I like it. This is the coffee color. Um, but if I need to go darker, I can resort to gathered ink. Or if I need to go darker than that, I can go to this, which is uh, mudslide. So if we have to, we can. So this is where we will unify the, layer, the layers we have because we've got the layer of the old paper. We've got the green 
layer and then we've got the photo and this is where it's going to make it seem like it's all one because this side is all going to just be that dark brown. If it's being particularly troublesome with the ink, I have been known to literally pick up the pad and use the pad along the edge if needed. But if I can just do it the easy way, I will. We're not in any rush now. Little Miss is uh, out like a light. Hopefully she'll give me an hour or so. I don't know where they came up with it. They say that a puppy her age should be sleeping 18 to 20 hours a day. And she obviously did not read this manual. Now, she's a good little sleeper. I'm, we're very, very lucky, and I know it. She usually will go to bed now around 9.30 at night, and she'll sleep through till 6 in the morning, which is incredible. So, I try not to complain. If she's awake during the day, during the day, I can deal with. All right, I'm, I hope it's showing up on camera. I'm looking at it from the angle, and I've got a nice dark brown there. And I'm very happy with it. So I'm just, uh, I'm just going to stick with this coffee color. So I find with old photos, uh, with photos that I've cut from books and magazines, not old photos, but copies of old photos, I can be quite vigorous with my Distress Ink. So, because I'm competing with that black and white. Plus, I find um, Distress Ink is designed to give you a little bit of wet time. And I will t make use of that and smudge it until, oh, I just dropped my thing on the floor, until I'm happy with that nice glowy illusion that I've given it. Hold on, I had to go get this. I do want... Now I want a, a more gentle edge. So switching over to a makeup brush. Really is a makeup brush. Dollar Tree. Go in the makeup section. Way cheaper than buying them at craft stores. I swear it's the exact same brush. So I want those corners just really nice and dark. I think the drama looks nice. So see what we've done here? We've taken it from a magazine, or a, pardon me, a book photo, and we've created a little sort of a carte de visite. I mean, it doesn't have the frame. We probably could do that. Um, the photo's old enough, and I bet there's no copyright on it, as far as people that are handy with with cameras. I'm going to have to take a knife to these and make sure I've got all the glue off. I just want to make sure these edges are right down because I do want to do just a tiny little bit of inking around this edge, but not too much. Just a tiniest little bit. just to sort of blend what has already soaked in from when I did the edge. Oh, I'm really happy with this. So now it looks like that's Louise, and she's sent a photo along with the book to give to, as a gift to her friend Rita at Christmas time. The, um, the page in the book that this came out of said that it was taken in Florida. So maybe Louise moved to Florida. <laughs> this is where my brain goes when I when I start doing these books and they take on a whole story and a life. <laughs> I guess it's a little bit odd. 
Well, I really like that. I'm happy with that. Let's see. That looks nice in there. Now, and where did it go? Oh, there it is. And now I've got to decide whether I want to put that on it or not. I kind of like it the way it is. I think what I'll do is I'm going to send this along and if the new owner wants to put that on there I rather like it just the way it is. I think I'm going to leave it be. Put this in a pocket somewhere. Here, we can put it right here in this pocket. It'll be there. So the new owner, I love this picture, look at that. After eating some peas, Timmy Willie fell fast asleep. That's the cutest little thing. Little field mouse, he ate so many peas. He's got a food coma. <laughs> and there we have Miss Louise. Mrs. Louise, pardon me. Mrs. Bolter. Beautiful. Well, thanks for joining me today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll maybe, if you're uh, if you're like me, I do have now a lovely collection of carte de, de visite and cabinet cards that people have sent me in happy mail, and I must admit I'm quite um, I'm quite covetous of them. <laughs> and, um, but I think I also enjoy making faux ones. I, it's just fun. So I hope you will uh, you will take a chance and um, try your hand at doing this too. Thanks for joining me today. Have a great rest of your day. Um, sorry, little Miss Kirby is sound asleep and I am not going to uh, disturb her. But I'll try really soon to uh, to have a little bit of a video visit with her so you can get to see her, especially before she gets too much bigger. She weighed in at 2.4 kilograms at her uh, checkup yesterday, so she's she's doing well. She's gained uh, probably about 1.15 kilograms. You're gonna have to do the math on that because I don't know. I think it's I think she's up in the five pound range now. Take care, everyone. We'll talk soon. Bye.